Hello, welcome to Love Rugby League Weekly. My name is Dave Parkinson. Delighted to be joined, as always, by James Gordon and Drew Derbyshire. Uh, gentlemen, hello. Hi, Dave. How are you doing, Matt? Don't you look okay? so uncomfortable when I sort of like <laughs> the introduction. Oh, yeah. You okay? Did you enjoy the challenge court? Loved it. What Great. a brilliant final. I mean, we're all terrible tipsters. I mean, <laughs> what was I saying? By 20 points. I, I, I said 18 I 16, and yeah. James went 16. We sort of all went up in multiples of two, didn't we? <laughs> we were just all completely blown out of the water. Um, your thoughts on the final, though? Um, I, th I mean, we talked about it quite a lot last week, didn't we, in terms of how good it would be if, if Catalan could win. I think it was a surprise to see that that, that Catalan were able to replicate their semi-final because that's what we were talking about, wasn't it? They'd have to be at that sort of level um, to beat Warrington, and and just Warrington just didn't didn't turn up really. And you know, no disrespect, don't no disrespect to Catalan in saying that because you know part of the reason Warrington found it so difficult was because the Dragons were were so good. Um, but but yeah, disappointing for Warrington who've now lost five major finals in a row. Uh, Warrington, so so they're good at getting to them, but they're not good at picking up the prize. Yeah, and, and you know that's. I guess for them now, that's sort of the difference between them being a challenger and being a, a champion club like a Leeds, like a St. Helens, like a Wigan. You know, if you think, you know, I know it's easy to say if you won all five, but if you think if Warrington had, Warrington have basically been within 80 minutes each time in those finals, mm -hmm. and they could invariably now have three Super League titles and two Challenge Cup titles in the last, you know, five or six years. Uh, so it's so disappointing for them, but. But good, but good for Catalan. What an opening as well. I mean, just after a couple of minutes, Lewis Tierney goes over. Really well worked try as well. It was a brilliant try, and Benjamin Julian against his former club as well with a silky offload. He, he did very well to get it away to Lewis Tierney. I don't think he's he took a pass out like that during his Warrington days. So it was just wonderful to see that bit of skill in his locker, wasn't it? To be fair, he seems to have excelled a little bit since he's moved back to France, hasn't he? I, to be honest, I didn't rate him too much when he were at Warrington, but but since he's gone to Catalan back to France, I think he's he's really come on a bit and he's come on leaps and bounds under Steve Mack this year. Our North Wales Crusaders followers, though, they'll be saying, hey, he did a good job for our club, though. Yeah, yeah, and I, I was reading a piece the other day when it, when he was actually at Warrington, he stayed in, in uni halls. What did he? Yeah, he was, he was housed in uni halls. I wonder whether that meant that, you know, after training, we're home for a quick pot noodle and <laughs> a bit of toast. I think, I, I mean... No, I one, think, no one pound drinks so it's well, but <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I think I, I think Ben Pomeroy must have been staying in his... Because I know Pomeroy was staying in uni halls this year, so oh, maybe, maybe Warrington have just got a spare... Uh, a well, spare they've got, yeah, they've, they've got a little partnership going on, haven't they, with uni of Chester, but going, going back to Catlands, it was a fantastic performance. Tony Gijo, is it Gijo or Gigo? Um, I said, said Gijo, but I'm, I'm from Wigan. Can, can we say both and get away with it? And Tony G. Tony G. Tony G like Adrian on the podcast, Big on Tony the final G. of the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. Tony G. Oh, we're um, going to be going QLT next, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> but what a performance from him and, and what a year it has been for, for him. He had a, he, we all know we were banned for an altercation with uh, an anti-doping official, but then he had it overturned, so we can't really really read into, into that too much. He had it overturned, came back. And what what a player he's been for Catalans this year, and he's come back stronger. I remember uh, there, there was talks of he was actually offered to Lee Centurions way back when, Don't remind years me. ago. Don't remind, I'm gutted it, because the coach at the time didn't rate him. And uh, <laughs> imagine that, T Tony G at Lee. Tony G at Lee. Matt, you would never have had Greg McNally, and Greg turned into true, a good player for true. Lee, so. But, but, a fantastic performance from him. First Frenchman to ever to ever win the Lance Todd Trophy. Another mark of history on on the day. But Catalan's in its 122 year existence, the first non-British team to win it. You just can't write it sometimes. Uh, I, I was thinking, Dave, quite mischievously, I suppose. What happens with Brexit? What if the Challenge Cup trophy can't get back in the country? Because Aye. obviously, once our Brexit happens in in March. He might have be able to come back in, that's why I was well, thinking. He might, might have to put it into the channel and try and <laughs> just reel it in. I'm sure he's got a British passport to miss the, <laughs> miss the sea cup. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting, actually, because I read, um, I, I, I seen, because Bernard Gauch, the Catalan chairman, was actually banned. Um, I, I was reading an interesting story, actually, the other day, I think, when um, back in the in the early 80s. Right. Um, he, he was actually banned from, uh, I think it was a French Championship final, him and another player, and they got reinstated the day before the final, and they were playing Villeneuve, and the Villeneuve, Villeneuve players basically walked off in protest and really? played the final, yeah. So did so it get awarded a, to his team? I, I'm not sure whether, I, I think so, yeah, but I think that, 
I think it had repercussions in terms of the development of French rugby league at that time because there was a big fuss about it. So it's just it's just fascinating for me that because of Catalan getting in the final that you get to hear little anecdotes and little stories like that that you know we didn't know and you know we talk about expansion teams and stuff but you've got to remember that that Catalan or at least the precursor to Catalan have been around since you know since the Second World War pretty much. So uh, yeah, I think even earlier I read something that the uh, the original thirteen Catalan side was set up something like the same time as Castleford. Right, and and that's the thing. And I mean, I think I know I wrote a piece yesterday. Uh, you know, it's a what a massive opportunity is now for French rugby league to to kick on. I guess in many ways how we hoped they would kick on when Catalan came in in, in two thousand and six. Toulouse have got a really good opportunity um, to get promoted to Super League this year, and you know, could you imagine the the momentum that that will bring if mm-hmm. if they can follow up Catalan's cup win by having a, a, a second Super League franchise? Can I bring you back to Toulouse in a couple of minutes? Because yeah. I just want to I just want to sort of finish off with um, sort of commenting regarding the performance because ultimately I reckon when they got eight nil up Catalans, they hadn't taken all the chances, and I was like really worried at that stage. Wanted to mount a comeback before half time, didn't they? And then Catalans got that that try to take them away. To be fair, I think Catalans deserved it overall, but I think I think Warrington in that second half, I think they should have scored us, particularly in the in that last twenty minutes when they was peppering that Catalans line. Gritty, oh, it was almost twenty. It was gritty defence from minutes the of just tackle, 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 yeah. wasn't it from Catalans? V- very good defence from from the Dragons, but I, they, I don't, they just didn't have the rub of the green. Warrington on the day we saw Ben Westwood nearly charged over the line he just couldn't get it in his grasp and that would have been an easy try for him on the day Stefan Ratford came up with a couple of un- uncharacteristic errors he-, he dropped the eyeball a few times but when he were going forward he-, he looked like the only one in the Warrington spine that were actually making breaks and making chances because I think it took until the, the 50th minute for Daryl Clark to mm. have his first run out of dummy half and we always see Daryl Clark excelling when he when he goes out to them quick quick bursts and catches the props off guard uh, so I just I just think too many big plays for for the Wolves uh, just didn't have the best game. The halfbacks have copped a lot of flack, haven't we? We did we mentioned this last week, didn't we? Uh, uh, Kevin Brown, we felt that Kevin Brown and Tyron Roberts had been. While they'd not been superb all season, they'd certainly cop maybe unfair criticism. But again, it was one of them games on Saturday that they just, you know, is it a case of are they good enough players that they can get through regular games and still have an influence? Whereas can on, I on, on a here? final, they've got to step up and. Can I level with you here? I just think Tyrone Roberts ultimately has been the biggest waste of money. I don't think he's been consistent enough. I think that his big game mentality on Saturday showed that he doesn't have it. I mean, yeah. he panicked. He broke, breaks through the line. All he's got to do is put a decent pass out, and the skills didn't match his ambition. I think if you compare him with Sandow, I think Sandow was a lot better. I think Sand, you know, because they they've sort of almost in a similar, you know, a similar sort of um, situation in terms of you know a heralded signing from the NRL who's then gone home early, and, and I know obviously they didn't know Sandow was going until he went, but. It's almost a bit like that, but if you look at what Sandow contributed to Warrington, I feel like he did more. So, so, Sandow's a, a big game player, though, isn't he? He's a match winner, Sandow, and we've seen that from him in the NRL. We saw him drop p- plenty of goals in the NRL and win, win games on his own. But Tyrone Roberts plays more as a half, uh, as a centre, sorry, than a half in in the NRL for goal calls. Before he came to Warrington, the season, or I think it was two seasons before, he played most of the season at centre. He's played so, quite a bit at fullback as well, hasn't he? Yeah, so he's, he's a bit of a, he's a, he's a utility man, so, but when you want him to play half every week, then it's a different story. Yeah, he's, ju- he's just not, he's never grabbed, you know, he's never really grabbed a game by the scuff of the neck, has he? I know he had a good game, was it against Wigan, I think, in the in the Yeah, club? yeah, yeah that, 23-0. That, yeah, that was probably his best game. But I mean that was that was, but the thing was he wasn't spectacular that day. That was almost like I would say that was should have been almost like a par performance from him. You know, he, he was good, but I think his his average performances have been well below that standard. So, so are we saying that that was maybe like an eight out of ten that game and all yeah, season? Yeah, I think so. Majority yeah, team's been averaging about six. Really, yeah, for I me. think so, and that's what I mean. I don't think you know he wasn't you know it's it, it was good that day, but it wasn't like a blistering you know spectacular performance. I think it was just a lot better than what we'd seen from him. Um, as for Kevin Bryant, you know disappointed for him really. You know he, you know he was very public in saying that he went to Warrington to win trophies and this was a, a major chance to do that. And he you know it must be good for him to have lost especially for a third 
a third time. Um, we don't even know this. Fight. This might be his last season. Mind yeah, he's, he's not signed. A, he's not. It's not come out and been announced that he's signed a deal for next year. That even no, though there are, even though there are rumours, his international career is over. So we know he's, he's not going to be featuring against New Zealand. In the, at the end of the year, so maybe they, that was his last chance, or obviously they, they could get to the grand final this year. Yeah, it's just one of them. We we'll see see what happens with that, but you know, disappointing for Warrington. It'd be interesting to see how they now bounce back from that. You know, they're back in action on Thursday against Hull, which is a, a sharp turnaround, but good in some ways because it means they can bury the hatchet, so to speak. And you know, they can't really afford to slip up. We were talking about this yesterday in the office that Huddersfield are. You know, Huddersfield is six points behind, but if Huddersfield win this weekend, they won't lose that four points, and all of a sudden, you you know, you start to worry about. And they have to bit. play each other. And yeah, that's going to gonna be one heck of a game, that isn't it, between them two? If, yeah. if things carry on the way that it's been looking like it's going to carry on, it's brilliant, really, that Huddersfield two seasons in a row really have breathed a bit of life into the Super Eights because they did this last season. They were eighth when they came and they were miles behind, and all of a sudden it was like they'd won a couple, and I think they won the first three in the Super Eights last year. And we're almost drifting into preview territory, which oh, we will have. And it's my that, fault. That, I was that'll, going that, to that'll that'll come up uh, again. A lot of people have said that this win for. Catalans will benefit the French game. I want to know how you think it's going to benefit the French game because if you look at the level of the current French league, you're talking championship level at best. Uh, well, I, I, I just think it'll inspire more more youngsters more than anything. I don't, it might grab a few French, the older French fans. French fans and he might grab a couple of USAP fans and, and bring them to the Stade Gilbert Brutus to watch a game, watch a few games, maybe even buy a season ticket. But I think what the the main thing, and I hope it does, I hope the, the Challenge Cup win will just put rugby, rugby league balls in, in kids' hands and get them playing the sport in, in France. I hope Catalans can kick on from this. I hope the, the national French press can get behind the, the Catalan story. But, and I know there's a lot of there's a lot of thing at the minute between the Catalonians and the French and the Spanish, but we won't get won't get into that too much. But I no, no, politics <laughs> podcast. No, no, no maybe politics. Maybe we could but, do that. Maybe we could bring out a politics podcast. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but but, but I, just, I just hope it, it can get more more youngsters involved in the game, and and that that will just. Pledge a better future for Catalans, won't it? I think um, I think Ian Laybourne wrote a piece yesterday um, that was saying that um, they'd never really got any major coverage in the national press. They'd always been a little bit of they'd always been ignored, and and this has sort of got them on the map a little bit. So um, it'd be nice to think that it could it could help it kick forward. And I mean, in many ways, that's sort of why I feel like the Toulouse. It's a great time for Toulouse to, to go up as well because then it's like here's where you can bang on about Toulouse. Yeah, by the yeah, way, you've mate. Got, you know, you've got. <laughs> You've got both the you've got the both the clubs that um, you know you've got both clubs that can push each other, and I think that's what they would do. I think they could both push each other to be better. Do you because think they'll push the rest of the game though in France? Well, I think this is. I think I mean I've always I've always been it, didn't they, yeah they? I've always been quite vocal about this. I think. I think the problem we've got with rugby league at the moment is we're always trying to get people into our league. When it's like, is the reality that the way that the best way of growing is to develop. You know, there's already 19 clubs in France playing in an organised league. What can we do to improve that rather than... Because effectively all we're doing is draining them of their best players. Mm. That, that's the reality of the situation where the best French players now, instead of playing in the French league, are playing in, in Super League or, or in Championship at the moment. So, for me, I, you've got to look at how what can the game do to improve that French league. But then at the same time, it's not the RFL's responsibility, it's the uh, FFR's responsibility. And if they're not interested in doing that then you know there's not really much much you can do I mean one thing I do want to, a little thing that I've been thinking how good would it be if Catalan were to do this like have like um, almost like a road show or like a history of French rugby league with the Challenge Cup trophy you know like at the ground or, or in Perpignan mm -hmm. or something where they could they could set up something for six to eight months next year of all the history of French rugby league, have the Challenge Cup there and, and use it as a big thing for French people to come and see the Challenge Cup, but also all the English fans that travel to go there and learn about French rugby league. Because like I say, there's there's such a heritage and such a history to French rugby league. You know, we all know about the Vichy government um, persecution and stuff like that against that nearly killed it off. But there's so many of these little stories. Again, the Bernard Ghost story. Um, I think the guy, uh, the guy at Toulouse, uh, Carlos, uh, I think Ralph Rimmer told me a brilliant story about him um, a while ago and it's like there's all these things that maybe us in England don't really appreciate has been going on all this time so it'd be great if, if Catalan could use this almost as a way of 
opening the door a little bit for everyone else to learn about French rugby league, its history, but also to help contribute to where it goes in the future. It's an interesting thought, and I was reading a, an article on running rugby, funnily enough, about the other code in France, which I know it's like comparing chalk with cheese, so I'll, I'll chuck it out there first of all. However, uh, the top two divisions in France, rugby union, are full-time. They've got to pay a bond before every season, not James. Uh, but they've got to pay up front. They've got to put a full uh, a full plan of everything that they're expecting. Um, the total budgets just blow our Super League clubs out of the water. I'm only talking second division French clubs here. Uh, it's like the, uh, the the one that has come into the league this time, Carcassonne. They can still spend €4 million Euros everything in. Now, I'm guessing that the majority of rugby league clubs in this country don't spend four million pounds all in or the like. No chance. I think, no chance. Um, I mean, I, I mean, I that's, a, that's like an NRO budget. That yeah, well, I mean, well, and, and that's second division. Yeah. You know, if you're looking at like Stade Francais and, and yeah, the top yeah, that's clubs, you well, that, well, that's one. And there was a piece yesterday with a Premiership Rugby Union um, in, in, in the UK, the prim, how the Premiership Rugby Union teams have sort of they're all losing on average three million a year because they've had to raise their salary cap to compete with the the French salary cap. I think right, it's, okay. I think I think the Premiership's gone up to seven million or something like that now, and that was because there was a big play drain to France because they were paying the big money. I mean, I've I've seen it before when I've been over in Perpignan. You know, you, you turn. Well, well, we've we've seen a lot of quite a few rugby league players going to to French rugby yeah, union yeah, clubs, aren't yeah, yeah. we? Wasn't, wasn't Chris Chris Nininu at a French club? Uh, he well, did, well, yeah. Barber 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 Barba went ben to Toulon as well, and Sonny Bill, obviously. And Was it I think Con Mika as well. Yeah, and and, and you know I, when you got, I think I I've been in Perpignan and I've turned the telly on, and you're watching like a third or four. You know, I'm watching some rugby union, and it's a decent quality game, and then I research it, and it's like a third or fourth division match. Yeah. Do and you know yet what I mean? it's getting, getting better coverage than we yeah. get over here. Well, yeah, and you're like, you know, this is it. I think, you know. No, rugby, rugby Union's reserve side, they've just signed a TV deal as well. It's been played on a Monday. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, See, I used to do a few sail jets games as well back in the past. If you learn your French, Dave, you, you could get over there. Uh, yeah, so long, Kuwait. Do you remember him going length of the field for sail? Or it, it, happy memories. I think all I know is yes, Papa. Yeah, he's been desperate <laughs> to get that. He's been desperate to get that. The, uh, but yeah, like you say, it's difficult to compete, isn't it, with that sort of mm. with that sort of money? So Catalan have just got to try and do, you know, whatever they can to 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 spread the gospel. Uh, another thing that's chucked out about the Challenge Cup is that it needs a revamp. Yeah, but they say that every year. Ah, they a... say it about the FA Cup. They say it, it, you know, everyone always says the magic of the FA Cup's dying or... It needs a revamp. Need so a revamp. What, 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 what it's, like, it's like stories just get recycled. Re like, keep, keep that one for, think, for the 20th of August next year. I, I, we'll think, again. I, I think the the main change that you could make to the Challenge Cup would be to have a Northern Rail Cup final before the final at Wembley on the day. Oh, interesting. So maybe you know, all the teams are getting knocked out in the third round or something. Come back. Well, or potentially. Or we have well, no, that. Well, Ninety-seven. Well, no, 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 so no, 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 okay, maybe, maybe, maybe not that, but maybe more the, bring back the old Northern Rail Cup, and instead of having the final at Blackpool, have it at Wembley before the before the Challenge Cup final. Mm. Okay. That could work. That because it, say say if you had someone I don't know, Workington v Bradford, so in in the in the final, then that will bring an extra. 15,000 fans, maybe 20,000 fans hang on, hang on. collectively. You're, you're, sort of, there's there's you're sort of dragging that up a little bit. I mean, when they've gone to Blackpool, I mean, what was the highest attendance? Well, exactly, but it's Blackpool. This is Eight Wembley. And a half this is, no, this is, this is Wembley, though. This is the pinnacle. And, uh, and you. you has well, you look, look at Bradford at all. Has it got more than two changing rooms? Because that's always a problem. Do you remember Halifax? They had to change in the opposite way when they <laughs> took the Northern Rail final. Wembley must have more. But, yeah, it's short. Well, well, they must do because they, 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 must have some they, had, they had the double header of the World Cup semi finals there. Uh, Remember, so they must have. Uh, they did, but you know, there's nothing to say. I mean, even Bolton, where they had the uh, the, the the semi-finals this year, didn't have a fourth changing room. Oh, they love some. They hey, Dave, 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 they love some nice toilets or something. <laughs> they love some nice toilets. But I, I, honestly, I think in terms of the format, I just don't. For me, I'd have more teams starting in it if that was at all possible. <laughs> but obviously, they, they start it really early, don't they? So that doesn't really help the amateur teams. For me, I'd be like. Is there a way we can get more teams to start in it in the very first round? There's no reason to me why every amateur club beyond a certain level shouldn't be in it. I think I know what you mean about you know do the Super League teams come in too late? But then the reason why they come in this late at the moment is because people were getting you know a Warrington beating someone hundred nil was just a waste of time. 
Um, I think I commentated on a game like they played Swinton a few years ago. Yeah, yeah it was at Alley Road, were it? 120 nil. I remember the. Yeah, Lee Breers scored like, so like 50 points or 40 uh, points. You know, Wigan, remember when Tompkins made his debut and Wigan put 100 on one? Five try and, debut. Uh, you know, and I think so that's why we've got this situation where the Challenge Cup comes in. The only other thing that I'd potentially look at is could you make the Challenge Cup and, and one thing I've mentioned before is is could you make the Challenge Cup almost like a floodlight midweek type no. event you know have a, I, I you know, have a Wednesday night or no. something and you know, just you could be onto something a little bit. And originally, my thought was to bring this whole revamp structure into the Challenge Cup because I was thinking, come on, James, we can't we, we get people moaning about Thursday nights on Sky, so we can't have a Wednesday night Challenge Cup. No, no, boys this, is what, this is what I don't understand because if you look, go at back the, to Bully Sunday all, rugby. All, all the set, you know, there's a lot of working class football towns and football clubs who play on Tuesday and Wednesday nights. So I just don't I'll never understand why rugby league's always dead set against playing on a midweek. No, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be not, not Challenge Cup. I'm, I'm, I'm not bothered what what days games are played on, but not Challenge Cup because that, then that means play part time players will be playing on on the Sunday in the Championship League One, and then they'll be playing on Wednesday, and then they'll be playing again on the Sunday. They'll be playing three games in seven days. Okay, okay. Well, so that's what part time footballers do. So what you're yeah, saying? Football and rugby is a bit different, isn't it? So, Recovery wise. So what you're saying? Leave the Challenge Cup the way it is. Straight knockout trophy all the way through. Maybe invite more teams in. Yes, yeah, that's just absolutely Kai Bosch, my idea. I, I, I just think it would. Okay, it, Dave, it, Dave's it, idea is just go straight to a, a Lee versus Lee spine. <laughs> 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 but no, no, but I, I, I think that would slightly kill the standard a bit as well. I don't think you get you'd see teams playing good rugby right, at all if, if you're playing three games in seven Dave, days. Tell us what, tell us what I've your got idea a suggestion is. because uh, all this stuff that I've read about the, uh, the, the, proposed, the proposed structure, the proposed new structure with 12 teams in Super League, 14 teams in the Championship, 12 teams in League One, uh, what, so that's 22 regular games, your magic weekend and then these six strange fixtures that nobody knows about at the moment. That yeah, but, but, hang on, hang on, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out, before you jump in. Um, I think that these extra six fixtures and anything is just completely mad. 100%. Well, I would, I would 100%. You say that, that, but they had that in the first 13 seasons of Super League, that's how it worked. They played 28 games, you played each team home and away, and then you had an extra six. Yeah, but it was rubbish. Why did it change? Yeah, it why did it change? It lasted for 13 years, which is much longer than any other format since. Uh, actually, you do make a point because rugby league does tend to change its formats uh, uh, quite often, shall we say? I'm, I'm sort of underplaying. But I, 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 I struggle to see why how. Why we just have 14 teams and play 26 games? I, I just don't see why we have to have this stupid, like, messing around. And have all these loot fishes when you could quite feasibly have 14 teams, 26 games, plus Magic Weekend, 27, and then have a few extra gaps in the calendar for more Challenge Cup games or more internationals. I mean, well, I wait, 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 let me have let me have my piece now. We're on about we're on about the just the Challenge Cup fading and and bringing the cup back, bringing the magic of the cup and all that. Do we need some it's music here? It's you need <laughs> some musical accompaniment. Put Titanic on it background. <laughs> really? What are we heading for an iceberg? It's going, it's going to get deep. What's then. that? <laughs> but. You, you have all this talk, and it's you can't expect fans to pay for everything. It's no, it's, it's still a very working class sport rugby league, and you can't expect fans to fork out for trips to Australia, trips to um, Newcastle every year, trips to the grand final, trips to Wembley, trips to internationals. You know what you're doing there, though. You're just saying your list because you're a Wigan fan and uh, they're playing in all these different think, places. Yeah, I mean, Liam, no, no, Liam, Liam only played in Dewsbury and Batley. This year. No, Wait, that's, that's, all, that's good for me. <laughs> seriously, seriously though, and and some of Bash. So, so you can't expect all these yeah, all these yeah. fans to go to all these events and, and just pull. And Money to and, I, and I think this is the issue: is that scrap magic, scrap magic weekend, and scrap magic weekend completely. Well, hang on, hang on. You're, really, really, you're going against what you were saying the other day about making it around events and. No, but I think, I think, I think, no, I think it is about is, events, but we have too many of them. Yeah, I think the problem is that, and I was I was saying this to Phil Kaplan last week, was the, the issue is we've got isn't necessarily the number of events; it's the volume of fans. Realistically, there's probably yeah. a couple hundred thousand fans tops of the sport. And so what's effectively happened, you had 50,000 at Wembley, which for me is a good attendance, but what's happening is the people that maybe would have filled out that stadium in, in previous years, they're the people who were instead, instead of going on that weekend, they're going on Magic Weekend. And, you know, and for me, as a, you know, if I supported a club, you know, if you support a Super League club, 
Are you going to go to Magic Weekend or Challenge Cup Final? You're going to go to Magic Weekend because your team's playing, and you're going to go to Challenge Cup Final if your team's in it. But if not, you're probably not going to be able to go for it unless, you know... Whereas in the past it was the one big day. Yeah, and that's the thing. And that's, and that's, and that's, think, that's my point. Think, the thing is, and the thing is, is because you know, whereas if it was football, because there's millions and millions of fans, they'd have different fans at each yeah, event. Yeah. Whereas the problem with rugby league is it's not got enough people. That there's always fifty thousand at Wembley is probably a, a, a pretty fair attendance, I think, in, especially because Catalan were there. Is a pretty fair attendance in the bigger picture in terms of how many people are actually, you know, mm. interested in rugby league, and obviously, yeah. The whole point is growing that, but to get, we've got to get there somehow. You've got to start somewhere, and I think the reality of the situation is, if you keep Magic Weekend and you keep Challenge Cup Final, the attendances are going to be lower than they were previously. Mm -hmm. But you know, we had fifty thousand this year. Well, last season, next season, just start staying for sixty thousand and just work it up that way. My idea regarding getting rid of these loop fixtures. Let me go back. Back to the point. I didn't finish my point. It's because you go. It's coming, no, James. No. I can't. I can't finish your sentence. Uh, okay. Do, 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 anyway. Do anyway. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you now. The 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 loop fixtures. I do not see how loop fixtures can work as well as promotion relegation. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't. For example, take take the table this year. If Widnes had to play Saints more times than they've got to play OKR, for example. But, 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 but well, you're I, forgetting Widnes did play Saints more times than Well, well they, they actually did, but, but say if it's teams like that all the time, so OKR have to play Wigan more than they've got to play... Well, how did they do it did the last time? Was it like you played... I'm sure it was like if you finished 12th... It was you, dependent you, on your league Yeah, position, if you finished 12th, you play 1st, 3rd, 5th, 7th and 11th in your extra games that's how it works yeah I know but it, it's, it's not right and, and that's why Magic Weekend's not right as well because you've got Witness playing Saints three times and Saints playing with Witness can I, three times can so. I then chuck another suggestion in because I'm determined I'm going to get this yeah, point sorry, in. On, I am because um, I've been putting a lot of thought we'll put it on this. next week's show yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll do my own monologue <laughs> Uh, no, I put a lot of thought into this. Originally, I was going to like chuck it into the Challenge Cup because I was looking at how um, Scotland has reorganised its League Cup with regards to everybody being put in pools. Oh, in football. Oh, I heard you this on Final Luther Podcast. Uh, yeah, yeah. So my initial thought was you try and come up with a, a suggestion for the Challenge Cup and that way you create another four games for the calendar anyway, which would mean that you wouldn't have to have the loop fixtures because you play nearly as many times but I know he's saying don't touch the challenge cup it's traditional it's, so why don't we introduce another trophy give someone else a chance to win something well that, I mean I think that's why you need to bring back the Northern Rail Cup but that obviously excludes the Super League teams because I think if you look at the teams outside the Super League they can only win the championship well they, they can only win the championship which isn't really valued anymore because obviously the qualifiers do you, think, you know, do you think the, the full time teams should be included in the championship no, in because, the I, no because I think I think the beauty of the Northern Rail Cup is it meant a team like Batley could win a trophy so and are we I think, talking like a check trade trophy type of thing if you look yeah, at so it, I, 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 football parlance yeah so I think you just bring the Northern Rail Cup back how it was and, and ignore the Super League I, you know I get what you're saying you know potentially could you have a, another top? I think the teams below Super League want to play more games I, I honestly think I think the Super League clubs need to to pay the wages that the no, the, no I think that, no, but what I'm saying is the teams outside of Super League I think if you said to Batley and teams like that they'd play as many games as you want them to play because I just think that's in their nature and that's what they all they're bothered about is playing rugby and right. I think they'd play more games so I think you could in, I think you could honestly if you were to come up with this competition you're talking about Dave you could involve the championship clubs in that and still bring back the Northern Rail Cup because then you've just got more there's more to play for there's more to, that's what sport's about it's about winning it's about winning trophies and at the moment we've barely got any in rugby league you've got the league leader shield which is you know devalued you've got the Super League Grand Final you've got the Challenge Cup Final which is great for your top clubs but then below that the championship isn't really worth winning because that's just a precursor to the qualifiers. The championship shield's not really worth winning because no one really cares about it. There's nothing else for them clubs, whereas I think, you know, like, <laughs> I, how, good, how good was it when Batley won the Northern Rail Cup in 2010? Uh, you know, that, was, was, that, that was actually a fantastic How day. good was that? I know, certainly not, from your point of view, probably well, no, not no, very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, from a wide game perspective, yeah, I mean, that was that was Batley's first trophy, if you remember, yeah, or the first major like, thing in the You know, why wouldn't you want to create that opportunity? For years. You know, it's like you look at Whitehaven when Whitehaven won National League 1 in, in 2006, 2005, sorry, 2004, 2005, they won it around that time, didn't they, Whitehaven? Imagine if the qualifiers were in existence then. And that meant nothing. 
Whereas, I know it didn't get them promoted when they won it, but it was still quite a big deal for them to win National League 1 and finish top of the table at that time. Whereas now, if they were to do that now, it's like, well, it doesn't matter. Hmm. Exactly, mm. so that, and that's the thing for me. I, mm. you know, feel like there's, too, there's too much faffing around going on when it's all about winning, it's all about winning trophies. Let's just try and create a bit more competition. Hey, tell you something, James Knowles out bring us down, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He does. uh, to be fair, though, to be fair, though, I, I agree, sh there should be more to play for. I mean, have you seen those old pictures from like back in the day of like, was it Swinton with the four cups, Huddersfield with the great Hunslet did it as well? Hunslet, yeah. yeah. So, you know, some really, really great sides of the past, and uh, you know, just to so you don't feel left out here, Drew. I've seen them pictures as well with uh, Wigan with the Regal Trophy, you know, Challenge <laughs> Cup, uh, League Leaders uh, Trophy, the proper one. Yeah, you know, and I think that if you, I mean, I know obviously football is an unfair comparison, but you know, I do a lot of non-league football, and, and even though the teams, you know, the, the, the you know, you know, you you really not really got a big chance of winning, but they're playing in like six or seven different competitions. You've got the league, the yeah. league cup, the FA Cup, the FA Trophy. You've got you know, they have the Cheshire Senior Cup here, you know, around these parts, and it's North like... Northwest Counties have their own cup competitions, yeah, and don't they? it's just like, you know, they've got a League Cup at their level, so that, you know, like Warrington, they've won the League Cup in recent years, which is the Northern Premier League Cup, if you like, and it just gives something extra to play for. You know, you don't have to take it seriously if you don't want it. If the Cup's a distraction, it's fine, but there are teams who will enjoy having a cup run and being able to put some silverware in the well, cabinet. Again, well, Widnes aren't getting a trophy this year, but they are getting the wooden spoon. I, no, that, that's a low blow. Let's leave him alone. He's already down on the fact that we're not playing for any trophies. Um, no, uh, <laughs> you've thrown me point now. <laughs> Go on, I lost it. No, and what I was, what well, I think, what I was going to sort of <coughs> chuck into the mix here was the fact that yeah, there should be more trophies available for uh, teams to play for. Um, yeah. I, I am a big advocate of that. I think that. How would your pool need format more work, Dave? How would your pool format work? Well, I was. So, would you have like the way that two I was thinking, Super League clubs and two Championship clubs in one pool? Is that what you? You'd seed it. So, if you look at how the uh, how the uh, League Cup in Scotland works, there's four teams that don't get entered into this whole pool format. So they've got eight pools of five. So is that the top four? So, aren't in so, it? Well, you could say the top four, the ones who are in Europe. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they usually pick like Celtic, Rangers and Hearts, I think, are this year, or... or Aberdeen. Aberdeen, yeah. Or, yeah. or, you know, I, 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 I didn't actually put names to them, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, but yeah. you could do that, so you could say, well, the top four. However... Which could tie in with the World Club Series type format, because if them top four are off playing in that... They could all go off they to play, could all that, then, play yeah. that and everyone else is still playing on that weekend. Yeah, yeah, so... What's even happening with World Club Series oh, yeah, nowadays? Yeah. That's, that's next week's podcast. I thought three teams weren't being it, not oh, two. God, or... no. Let's not drag this up. Oh, have, have, have you heard something? Oh, God. Well, well there's... Teams don't want playing it, do they? If they don't, if they don't win league, if they don't win the, t the is, respective is that because titles? the bottom team in the NRL could still beat our champions? Is that <laughs> <what> it is? <laughs> is that why? It's, I won't go that far, Dave. But, to be don't honest. look at me like that. It was an honest. It was an honest response. No, uh, it's, yeah. it's just better. Anyway, anyway. Can we come back to that? Yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah, we'll do that next. Yeah, week. yeah, no, no. I, I, think, yeah, yeah. I, I actually think that's a really good. A really good <laughs> point, it is. I'm gonna, it is. I'm gonna actually jot that down somewhere. I think. Let's get through this agenda, Dave. <laughs> we've, we've only gone. We've only done one point on the agenda. No, no, we've not. We've not. We've actually hit three of them now. All oh, right, okay. Uh, but do we've, remember, we've only been going three hours. Do you remember also that you can tune into the final Hooter podcast if you want more mayhem, 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 and mayhem. Um, uh, we've got a really interesting one this week. There's uh, people like Michael McCallorum that Adrian spoke to, Tony G. Tony G. Uh, Tony G. We hear from uh, Steve McNamara, Steve Price, Remy Casti. Uh, and there's an interesting piece as well that I did with uh, Crary up at Barrow. Oh, Crary? Yeah. Um, just talking about how they have targeted certain games this season oh, it's worked. Looking. It's worked. oh it definitely has yeah, yeah. And also although having said that I bet they didn't target Toronto at home uh, no no no. Or, or indeed Lee. Or Lee but they got they got that and you know fair play to them it was, sorry it was, Dave it, no it was really eye opening speaking to Paul Crary because I like these stories that are right on the rugby league edge because there's so many clubs that are either in transition they're really struggling at this moment and sometimes 
I don't think we give enough credence to sort of what's going on. There was a recent story with Whitehaven where Forster's not going to be there next season, which is a, a travesty considering the job that well, he's done. I think part of the issue is obviously all the structure changes don't really help anyone because you can't plan. You can't, you know, I think Andrew Henderson said that, didn't he, when he left London Broncos, mm -hmm. is that you can't plan for five years in advance because you haven't got a clue whether what's going to happen you, you, you know you don't know whether the structure is going to be the same you don't know whether there's going to be a closed door you don't know whether there's going to be a promotion you don't so it's like how on earth can you build your team and plan the only teams ultimately that can plan at the moment in time are those teams at the top of Super League who know that no matter what they're going to be at the top of Super League no matter what the structure is but even then the, there's teams that they had their plans through into this area. I'm thinking, well, Leeds have been in two of the last qualifiers, yeah, two qualifying last campaigns, years, yeah. and uh, Warrington have been dragged into it. Catalans have been dragged into it. Is this the real reason in that case that they wanted to change the structure? Because I, too many I Super League clubs so. have got think, dragged into I it. I don't think so. And they were expecting the likes of Witness yeah, and Salford yeah, to be there, trying to get rid of them. No, I don't think so, because I, I think... Uh, realistically, Leeds were never going to get relegated. Last season, Warrington were never going to get relegated. I don't think it's that really. That's. I think it's. I think it's naive, really, for people to think that that's the reason. I. The, the reality is, is that the format at the moment isn't conducive to create to generating revenue, because you don't know when your games are. You know, the last two months of the season are completely unplanned, and it's just putting people off, and you're playing the same teams over and over. I think it's more that rather than. You know, because are you telling me that in the Super League meetings, Hull KR, Widness and Salford are all sat there saying, oh, we've got to change the structure, we can't go out, and all the other teams saying, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Are you, realistically, do you well, think that's what's happening? Uh I will say yes when those other teams have been involved that I've already mentioned. So Catalans and everybody's got, oh no, we can't lose Catalans. That's how we're jolly but, over but, to France. But do you gone. think? Do you think like Wigan Saints and all them teams are sat there thinking we need to keep Witness and Salford in and not let Toronto and London and Toulouse? I don't think they are. No, I, I don't I, think. Yeah. I think they're wanting to actually try and expand the competition but, in that. I, way. I think they are. I think they're trying to expand it a little bit in in, in that way. I think but a lot of people. It chucks up uncertainty, doesn't it? But You've but got the whole situation. I, 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 you got Featherstone who are the fixtures yeah. thing's a joke. The fixtures thing's a joke. How can you... You play 23 games and then literally you have two months of fixtures announced at like a week's notice. Like take, you know, I'll use witness because obviously they're the games that I that most of Oh, me. James had a no. meltdown in office. No. James had an absolute meltdown if, when if he you, found out. If you, look, if you look at witnesses' games that have been arranged in the Super 8s, they got announced at what, the start of August? They've already had one changed to Sky on the Saturday so like you know I, I bought tickets whatever for, for certain games for three games and I bought tickets for three games and one of them's changed already and it's like that's just it's just putting that's just putting fans off that's inconveniencing fans and it's putting fans off that's and Sky that's or that digit. I know it's that's... Sky but it's stopping people buying season tickets because you don't know what's going to happen in this final phase of the season so I, I honestly think that's one of the key reasons I, 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 I'm not a massive fan of the conspiracy theory that Oh, everyone! Super League are just voting to keep themselves in it. I, I'm not a massive fan of that because I just think, you know, I, I don't think that. I do, I do I don't genuinely think, I don't believe think. that Super League teams are actually uh, want promotion relegation. No, and I don't. But they want to get more terms, don't could, they? Well, we don't know, do we? we? We're getting one thing from Championship League, one thing the other from Super League. We don't, we don't know who to believe because there's, there's no, there's no official statements or anything. Oh, you, you just, you're just going from one interview with the Super League club to one interview with the Championship club, and they're just both like hitting each other out, aren't they? The you don't, you don't know what to believe. The thing for me though, Dave, is surely I know teams outside of Super League are saying the Super League teams are looking after themselves, but surely having an automatic promotion relegation is better for the Championship teams than the current format because the current format. It was always in favour of Super League, that current format, because inevitably you was expecting, certainly in the opening couple of years when there wasn't the well, same... Well, like we've seen with the first year, no one, no one got relegated. And that's what they hoped would happen every year. But, I'm but, sure but, that's that, what they hoped no, would that, happen every year. No, but that's year. what I'm saying is, I'm, th I'm saying to you, if that was the case, why did they want to get rid of it? Because by going to an automatic one up, one down, it's guaranteed a championship team will come up. You know, if you look, if that was the format back in... Well, I suppose it went a bit differently because of the results, because Lee bottled it a little bit. But in theory, Bradford could have come up that year. If they bottled a, it as well. They bottled it in the million pound game, obviously. But do you see what I mean? And it's like, for me, if I was a championship club, I'd be looking at all the securities there. Now, if we say we're going one up, one down, that means if we win the playoffs or whatever it was, like the old days, 
we definitely go up. Whereas at the moment, like look at Toronto. Toronto. Do you think they'll still chuck in like a minimum standards thing? I think they need like, to. Because you had like. To. Uh, do you, uh, again, Jewsbury I'll, I'll go back to Jewsbury these days, Hunslet, Jewsbury, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. fantastic teams at the turn of the millennium. I know we're going yeah, back yeah. nearly 20 years now, but, yeah, yeah. but you know, we saw those teams I get think pulled apart. That. And I think, that's, I think the problem is, is that we've said rugby league hasn't, you know, it, it sort of wants to go down the licensing route, but then it doesn't. So it's like you've got to try and find a hybrid solution. And I think the hybrid solution is have the automatic promotion relegation, but have the minimum standards. But then also, if you've got these expansion teams from strategic areas, why not increase the league to accommodate them? And, you know, that's what I wrote last week in my 16-team blog. And maybe that's why there's been a delay. Maybe they read my blog and they've had to rip up all the plans and they're going to go 16 teams. So we're going to be up with the, look of the league, Super League. Well, you got a lot of stick on that, Did on you, that piece. you got a load of stick? I'm not having that. I know it sounds unlikely. Well, and you're it? just sitting here smiling at me, knowing that you've, you've, you've caused an uproar. You've caused a you've caused a tsunami in rugby league. What can I say? What can I say? That's James. <laughs> Love a bit of controversy. <laughs> uh, what do you think? Uh, we'd love to hear about your thoughts on what you think of the structure at the moment, how you think the various things that we've talked about so far in uh, this episode uh, are, would affect your club. Do you enjoy it at the moment? Do you like the uncertainty? Or do you not? Would you sooner be able to plan everything, uh, have it down, jot it all down in a calendar and go for it? Um, right, I think before we go, let's go into preview mode because we're in that sort of uh, mode where we've got lots of games to look at again. So I'm going to start first of all with the Super 8s. We've already name-checked this one. Warrington against Hull. What do you think? Warrington. Warrington. <laughs> because, simply because Hull... Uh, are absolutely having a nightmare at the minute, aren't they? They know the season's over, the players can't seem to get motivated whatsoever. And I know, and I know it'll be, be very tough for Warrington. Steve Price and his, and his backroom staff face a massive task this week in actually getting his players up for the game. Getting the, play, getting the players actually over the Wembley walls and, and actually get them in, getting them prepared for the Super 8s because what, they, they probably got back on Sunday, maybe. They might have stayed yeah, in Sunday. London. Yeah, they stayed Saturday night. Yeah, so they, they, I think they might have come back Monday, actually, because the homecoming was going to be Monday. Well, so, so You're not meant to have told anybody about that. They were going to have a homecoming on Monday, Dio. Yeah, they were... They, they, bus, bus was booked and everything Monday. <laughs> it's, not going, it's not going ahead now. You're a cruel yeah. man. You're a cruel man. <laughs> Stop rubbing it in. But you know, no, no. You've stuck the knife into James about Widnes. No, joking aside. You've not had to go at Lee yet, so that's good. Although, James has, so yeah. that's it. No, joking aside. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think Warrington will win this. Warrington will bounce back. And, and the team news is out as well, isn't it? Um, ben Murdoch Masilla is not playing. He picks up a knock in the Challenge Cup final. Boarding ben, Thompson comes in. Be, Boarding Thompson and, and Ben Pomeroy come in. And, and they're not too bad players to, to bring in, are they? You both mentioned Hull. Now, usually every time that Lee Radford loses two or three games in succession, the the Radford out banners come, there's all petitions in the whole Daily Mail and whatever. Do you think he's under some real pressure this time? Uh, I don't, I don't f- go on, go on, I answered first last time, but I, I don't think he is. I don't think he is. I think, you know, you look at what he's done, he's turned him into contenders, hasn't he? They won, they won back-to-back Challenge Cups. We need to do an impression. Um, I could have been a contender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole of where they should have... The whole, of, whole uh, where they are... Hull are where they should have been for a lot longer than they have been, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. They should have been top four contenders for a lot longer than they have been, and I think I think it'd be it'd be a poor show from them if if, if Lee Radford isn't there next season. I think Hull should always be a top four club, by the way. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. But I think that that's that's another thing. We're, I'm not trying to go into the into the discussion too much again. But that's the thing with the Super Eights. It brings out a, a lot of. Um, Dead rubber games, really, because Hull aren't really playing for anything. Hang on, are they? every minute matters. That's what we're going every, to every minute first. matters. Yeah. But no, but on, honestly, it's, all have got nothing to play for at all. The fans know it, the players know it, the staff know it, the club know it. Uh, it's, they've got nothing to play for. So, how, how do you prepare yourself to to get motivated for a game, even if you win sixty nil? Right, it's, I'm not, gonna, it's not going to matter at I'm all. I'm going to turn it? this question back on yourself here because St. Helens and Wigan don't matter, does it? The oh, silence is dead. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he couldn't give me an answer to that one. No, but it always, a derby always matters. The old derby I thought a few weeks ago mattered. Hang on, because we can't all... go any higher. Yeah, but, no, but it's, all, it's all about cementing a place, yeah, a home game for yeah, the semi-final. That doesn't matter, it's a dead rubber. 
No, because you you want you want to. Saint Helens have got to finish top. Wigan's yeah, got to yeah, finish but you, no, yeah, but you want to cement your top two. If Wigan were to lose this week and Cass win, Cass are only a point behind. So, I mean, I think. That own, I mean, that own I mean, game, as right? I say, Ellens have probably got nothing to play for, but but they'll want to beat Wigan just because it's Wigan, um, and I think I think Wigan will beat them. I think Wigan will beat St. Ellens. I like that. Chut's a real spanner in the works, that. Did you notice? I think Wigan will win. He's nearly no, lost it. He's nearly no, lost it. Nearly lost it. Huddersfield, Wakefield, Dave. Huddersfield, Wakefield. I'm going to go Huddersfield with this Yeah, Huddersfield, I think. Huddersfield are the team that are, you know, threatening to breathe life into the, to the, to the top, to the Super 8s. And, you know, if, if, uh, if they were to win this weekend, you know, the pressure's really on. I, do I like thought there was six points difference. I'm sure. Oh, I don't know. I don't I know do, if that league table's right. I do really like Wakefield, though. I like the job Chris Chester's done. I think he's got some real decent players in Big Bowl not having uh, D- David Fafita, though, isn't it? Oh, it is. I think it is. He's, I mean, he's, he's out for the rest of the season, I think. He's awesome to watch as well. Wakefield are, oh, in, a, Wakefield are in a similar position to Hull, really, aren't they? They just need to consolidate. And got a little story about David Fafita as well. And I, th- I think the game needs more characters like David Fafita. I know he ruffles a few. Th- I'd love it. I'd I, love remember, I remember when Wigan were playing Wakey and, uh, at Wakey and, uh, and he came out in, in a preview in the week he said something like uh, Wigan are grubs he called out a few of the forwards that's like you don't see that you don't you don't see that in press interviews I'd anymore love it. I'd love it. it's all professional it's all it's going to be a tough game it's going to be a tough battle it, the forward pack's going to be strong but it, hang but, on can we just do that we could actually dub that onto every single Wigan player that gets interviewed before before a game because that was just a brilliant that was a brilliant impression where have you got that from <laughs> how many of these interviews I, have you done I, I, That's, you've got that off to a tee the thing with Fafita is I'd love it if he played the ball properly I've okay. never seen a player does, that, does anyone play the ball I've properly seen, anymore yeah, no one I mean, I've never seen a player not play the ball as often as Properly as often as yeah, but does anyone put no one put no one put no one puts the ball in and rolls it back with a studs? I'm with you where you mention about characters and David Feeter is definitely one of those. I interviewed him last year after a game and he he subtly dropped an f bomb into the interview that I didn't pick up until I'd actually played the interview (laughs) on hospital radio. I was like, oh my goodness. So that was a bit of bad editing. Matt. This is why I'm, I'm going to go through this with a fine tooth comb, by the way, just to, to get any mistakes. Right. Out. Next game, Dave. Go on, what's next? Cass? Uh, Castleford and Catalans. Well, I mean, the thing with Catalan is they've... And again, this is another... Well, I don't know if it's a problem with the format, but... Um, you know, Catalan have basically just written off the Super rates, haven't they, to focus on Wembley? And well, I, I, I think, think, I think they'd, have to, they'd have to actually win their, all of their remaining games and fourth place, Warrington, and have to lose all the remaining games, depending on points difference yeah, as well. There's, there's no, no way, there's no way. There's yeah. not a shot, not a Catalan else chance of that happening. So, But to be fair, Catalans will be there under, under 21 or something, won't they? Yeah. Well, like, I mean, I think I, I think I said it like McAlorum said he, he hopes he's not playing this week, and that just says it all, really. <laughs> Well, they'll, 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 be t- they'll be turning up half cut anyway, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, getting back into Perpignan at 1am and then going for an all-night party. And then uh, on, I saw the scenes on Monday as well. From, oh, from brilliant, the, weren't it? Was it, was, it, was, it was fantastic to see. It, it was magical. Uh, moving on to games that actually mean something then. <laughs> the qualifiers. Everybody's favourite topic. The, the, best, the best competition, again, out, out of the two in... In what four years now? But, but that, the, the qualifiers is good, all. But that's not necessarily. No, it's, good not, it's not. But the qualifiers. Is this another reason why they want to change it? Because that's getting more attention on the top of the league. Yeah, and, I, and I, but I don't think that's a bad. I don't think that's a bad reason to change it because you do want the attention to be on the better teams. You do want. The, we should be talking about the best teams. We shouldn't be talking about mediocre teams that have got another chance of survival. Right, okay, the, 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 best, the best teams are Saints, Wigan, Warrington... No, no, that's what I mean. So in your yeah, but we're not talking about them, are we? We're talking about... That's what I'm saying. No, but that's what I'm saying. I'm that, saying that's the same point. That's actually. what I'm saying. That I'm point. saying we're talking so much about the mediocre teams in the qualifiers. Oh, yeah, instead yeah, of yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. yeah. Oh, OK, the then. I, I get the hint, I get the hint. Let's just whiz oh, through well, these. No, uh, Leeds v LKR. Leeds. Uh, uh, Toronto v London. Oh, hey, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> put me right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, Leeds, Leeds. 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 Uh, right, stop it. One. Stop it. You'll get us taken off her. Huh? <laughs> tell you. Uh, Toronto against London. <sighs> Toronto. Mm, uh, uh, it's out Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Toronto or Toronto. Uh, Toulouse against Witness. Toulouse. 
I reckon to lose by eight. They have got nothing to lose, have they? It's very good. Halif- very droll. Halifax versus Salford. 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 Jackson Hastings is ripping it up at the Halifax minute. Ju- Halifax, Halifax, Halifax are struggling to score, aren't they? They've only scored six points in the two games so far. Uh, yeah. They have, they have. Um, still doing the Championship proud, though. Yeah, no, they, yeah, I mean, obviously they pushed. Scott Morell's brilliant to watch at times as well. The way he, he organises his team around the park, it's, it's brilliant. Biggest boot in Championship, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, on to the Championship Shield. Uh, this We've got a Friday night game. Championship Everyone Shield. should be talking about this competition. If I was a betting man, I'd have a bet on either Fev or Lee to, to lift the Shield. <laughs> Sheffield v. Dewsbury. Lee, um... Don't get Sheffield. confused. I'm not, Sheff- I'm not getting into, drawn into this yet because we've not caught to that particular to be fair, game. To be fair to Sheffield, Sheffield have done a real good job, haven't they, to consolidate because they were sort of hanging around the bottom three for a long period of the regular season and, you know, they've strung a few wins together and they've propelled. You know, I, th- I remember at one time there was a big gap between Batley and Barrow and then the bottom four mm-hmm. and obviously now Sheffield have um, they drawn bridged it, haven't part, they? Yeah, and they're, they're back up behind Batley you know it's just unbelievable to see that Liam Featherson have got double the number of points that anyone else has got Barrow against Batley I can see that doesn't draw any interest because there's no reaction I would have Batley Barrow I go Barrow home advantage counting though Featherston against Lee this for the big hit this I, I'll, 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 I'll go Sheffield as well yeah, Lee you know what? I'll go Lee. Life. 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 So that'll, that'll, secure, it, that'll it, secure home advantage in the Championship there's a, Shield. There's a bit of... Um, it seems a little bit unsettled at, at Feather at minute, doesn't it? There's a few yeah. players being released. Tom Holmes, the latest uh, high profile to go. Gazot went a couple fair, of weeks ago. To be fair, Richard Moore's announced he'll be leaving at the end of the season. To be fair to Lee as though, isn't he? To be fair to he's, Lee as well. Still still playing though. Despite all the dramas that have gone on to Lee, they're on an incredible run, aren't they? What have they won now, Dave? Something like um, eighteen it, of the last well, twenty. Basically, it's, like it's only to lose, it's only Toronto, sorry, that have beaten them. Yeah. So, so they, every time Lee Cup gets Toronto, so thankfully they're not going to play him again. Yeah, I th- I'm sure it's something <laughs> like they've won eighteen in twenty or something yeah, it is, like that. It's, it's, like it's that. a great so, run. Yeah, I think Pertle's gonna done a good job there. I hope, I hope he keeps his job as well next year, depending on what what the situation is. Whether they go they go full time or part time. That's I, showing I, itself to talk about the woes at Lee. Maybe maybe yeah, we we'll should do, that, do something it. a bit. We'll can, I, can I have an hour on that? Can we'll we? We'll we could have an hour on that. Do a love rugby league weekly extra for that one. <laughs> um, Swinton and Rochdale. I mean, the way that people are talking is that relegation battle. This it could end up. Well, both of them look destined to go mm-hmm. down. So whoever wins both stays of them might not go. Down. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, you want to, you want to, you know, whoever you want to win this to make sure you finish above. So if anything like that does happen, that you're not thinking, oh. See, we mourn here about about the structure, not knowing what it is, and it's so far into the season, we don't know. What it, imagine being a player, player of Swinton or Rochdale this weekend, not knowing if we lose this. Right, well, are we in League One? Are we in Championship uh, next year? It's, it's a bit because like a lot of them players will move, will stay in the Championship, won't they? We're relegated. They'll move on to clubs in the Championship by possibly clubs who come up. So it's a bit like the League One thing, though, isn't it? It's like you know York were on a high two weeks ago because, and then Bradford, budget- because Bradford lost, so that meant York were top. And then it comes out saying, "Oh well, Bradford are probably going to get promoted anyway." That was that, and it's just that was like, that was very bad timing. That wasn't it. But I, I'm not I'm not buying into this uh, whole theory of. The I just want Bradford to get straight back in Super League and all that. I, I, I'm not buying into that, but it was just it was poor time and how it, how it came, the story came out and after what was it three days after Bradford lost and got knocked off top spot. Hmm. Conspiracy theories a ride in rugby league. Um, Bet Fred League One then. Bradford against Keithley, local derby, so it means something. This one. Bradford. Bradford. Doncaster against Newcastle. Doncaster. Uh, Even though Newcastle, Newcastle have done all right this year. They've, they've blooded a lot of youngsters through. They, they also look like they're spending some money for next year as well. There's talk of them having a bit of a kitty to go around, isn't there? Well, they've signed Liam Finn, haven't they, already? Mm. Mm. Although I don't think, as a witness fan, you'd be that impressed with his showing no. so far. And they've oh. they've and they've pass interceptions. Lee, Lee one might be a, They've, they've uh, been linked with Gazok as well for next year. He's actually said on uh, Twitter that he fancy a, a farewell at Wigan, hasn't he? Uh, he has, but I don't. Is there a little winking face I after? C- it? I c- yeah, I can't. I can't see it happening. That but would it, be a great 
That would be a great story, wouldn't it? Unbelievable at Wigan. He was unbelievable at Wigan. Okay, moving back to League One. Sorry, I derailed it. Uh, Hemel against Whitehaven. Whitehaven. Hunslet, London Scholars? Hunslet. Hunslet. The big Welsh derby. North Wales Crusaders. West Wales Rangers. Wait, hold on a minute here, Dave. I was listening to the final of the podcast. You said Old Welsh derby. Uh, How hey. can it be Old West Wales oh, Raiders at New Team? I'm trying to build it up. I'm trying no. to give it that drama. We've only been in since this year. No. I saw the I Old Welsh Derby. derby. <laughs> I saw a Welsh Derby last year. The old North Welsh Wales, derby. Dave. North Wales. Crew, crew, Crusaders. Uh, that, that'd be good for my mate buzzer anyway. And uh, Oldham against Coventry. Oldham. Oldham. Big one. Big one. This is a big hit. I know I've built the other one up. This is the biggie. Workington against York. I'm excited because I'm going to it. Workington. Oh, this is a toughie. This is a toughie, isn't it? York top. Mm, but York top. But work here. Beat Bradford last week. Penkovic, two tries. A win for Worky. Um, I'll go for York. I'll go for the Neats. Up the Neats. Up the Neats. Uh, as always, an absolute pleasure. What a riot this uh, past three hours has been. Ed's head <laughs> is exploded a lot. <laughs> I even got to shoot Drew up at one stage, which was fantastic. <laughs> uh, we'll be back again next week. Thanks for joining us. Again, we love your comments uh, and just keep watching. Love Rugby League Weekly. <laughs>